why did I put the community on waitlist? And how did I exactly do it? And what's the strategy? So let's quickly zoom in and do some math. OK, so let's go ahead and think about the next few months if I would have not changed anything purely from a revenue perspective. OK, so my monthly recurring revenue at the beginning was 75,000. I had 2,500 members. My churn is at 10%. So that means in order for me to grow by 10% every single month, I need to you know, before I even can grow, I need to refill 250 members. And then um, if I want to grow by 10%, it means that I need a total of 403 members every single month. Now, my average uh, customer acquisition cost. So this is something that is coming from my experience of running ads for over a decade. And that is that as you scale up, your customer acquisition cost goes up, right? And so if I take rule of thumb experience from what I had of the four months running ads directly to grow with Evelyn, for three months of our running ads directly to, to grow with Evelyn, I can see that about every 100 customers, my customer acquisition cost increased by like 10%, right? So this is why I have the formula here. And it had been creeping up from, um, you know, actually making money on the front end. So being uh, below $40 customer acquisition cost, around $38 customer acquisition cost for $49 customer, all the way to creeping up to 65. And so when I extrapolate it up, uh, I land you know, already at average customer acquisition cost of 95. And this has uh, been proven to be true as I scaled up towards the closing launch. So that means the ad spend required to keep growing by 10% would have been already 38,000. So you know, a significant chunk of the monthly recurring revenue, which would have led me to a monthly recurring revenue of roughly uh, 82,000 by the end of the month and 2,653 um, members, right? Because we have to take churn into account. So starting the new month with 82,000, again, um, when we want, if we want to uh, grow, outgrow churn, we would need to bring in 434 new members and, you know, again, grow by 10%. And now the customer acquisition cost is already around 144, right? So it keeps creeping up because we also have to factor in the people that we already needed here to grow. So that gets us up to ad spend of 62,000. And you can see, you know, how it gets thinner and thinner here. And then monthly recurring revenue at the end would be 90,000. But if you, you know, this is not as accurate as it should be, but if you just look at how this affects, right? Sorry, this should have just come down. How it affects the cash flow at the end, uh, it's pretty significant. So already after the second month, you know, it would have tremendously cut into profitability. And then third month, you know, you can see this trend just keeps continuing if I want to keep growing. And although um, it would get me to 100K, right, into the diamond on school, I would actually be losing, um, need to be losing money on uh, this the front end to make the money. Now, if we can kind of take the same idea and say we're capping the membership, right? Now I have all of this money in theory, but I'm not going to spend it to drive signups to my wait list. And so for the waitlist sign up, let's also say diminishing returns. Let's go, let's say we don't use a strategic freebie. We kind of could just go for complete registration on the page and it also goes up, right? So let's say we have an average complete registration for the um for the waitlist of seven dollars, right? So let's go like really crazy. That would still mean that I can grow a wait list of 30,000 people, right? And so because I now close the door and I re reduced supply by not being always open um, and increased demand because now, you know, let's say roughly 30,000 and this is calculated like super carefully. I can actually, because price is a function of supply and demand, I can ask higher prices when I do open for a flash opening for the membership, right? So let's say 30,000 people on the wait list will nurture. So um, what if we can convert 10% of them at a new price point? because we can now ask a higher price of $99. So that makes a huge difference in MIR, right? So a much better bird's eye overview, toe in the sand, real life always plays out differently. But from a strategic perspective, a much better approach, plus I have 30,000 emails, right? For wherever I want to go in the future. And so and that was the core consideration behind that. 
from uh, just purely how do I best spend my money to get the best return? Now, there are a few other qualifiers that come into here, right? So Grow with Evelyn, I decided to that I want to offer a lot of personalized support, right? In fact, providing the personalized video feedback is one of the core value drivers that people really love about the community. And so for me, um, it would have not made sense to keep bringing in new people because from a capacity perspective, new people require the most of my attention, right? And then people churn either really, really quickly in my world because it's not what they expected, right? Or I cannot quickly enough connect with them so that they understand how to get the value from the community or they don't churn for a very long time, right? But it is not good for me as in how I'm allocating my scarce time and attention if I'm constantly bringing in new people that require the most time and attention, right? So even just from a capacity perspective, it's smarter to bring in people in bulk and then have onboarding events, right? Where there's initially uh, a condensed one-to-many indoctrination into the community as in this is how you get around, this is how you get the value, this is how things work, right? Also organized with other elements of my business so I can block things off and fully focus on that versus every single day there's people trickling in that now require all my focus, right? So I'm getting scattered. Now, from another perspective um, is my plan is not to push like that and then eventually get 3,000 members in because I also noticed there is diminishing returns as in how many members in the community and how well I can serve them, right? So there is this part of me that deeply believes I need to do a good job for this to be a space that should exist in the world. And if I keep adding more people, I cannot other but dilute my focus and that would mean that I would need to go back to a place of you know getting things away from me bringing on people building a team and I tried that in the past and it wasn't fulfilling and it wasn't what I wanted ultimately to build so for me right now the the goal is to eventually fill up to a cap of 3,000 paid members from the waitlist so I will push a lot of the traffic that would have been for conversion campaigns directly to school into growing that wait list and then opening up to eventually fill up and top up all the way to 3,000 paying members. That is a capacity that I know I have. And after that, um, just when members leave from the membership, replace them with members from the wait list, um, but at the higher price point, right? So I can still grow in my free crying revenue right now as I'm filling up towards my ultimate kind of paid members cap and goal. Um, and you know, I'm not saying it will be definitive forever. Maybe in the future I have more capacity, but with the mastermind, everything, I'd rather actually think not. Uh, but I can still also grow from members who have joined, you know, at a very early price and they, gra they grandfathered it in at a very low price. But if you should decide to leave, I can replace that spot with a higher paying member. Right. And so it, it allows me to be much better reinvest my money into my business it's much more long term as well because i'm also building list uh, it is more profitable i can manage my capacity better it creates a better members experience it creates a better life experience that's the um the reasons behind why i did that now let's look at the setup right so how what does that look like in reality so in reality i went into my settings and here under the pricing i put my price to free now, when you do that, what you can do um, is that you then change the label here uh, from free to paid. And now you have this paid community. And when people request access, they are getting a membership question. And so I use this plugin here, which is membership question. And here, what's the best email address to send you the patient's pack, help them with training materials and inform you about when you can join, right? So that's the question. Now, then I have set up a Sapier integration. Let me just find that to make sure people are getting into MailerLite, which I set up specifically for Grow with Evelyn, everything from scratch, because I also wanted to, you know, I will keep this clean in a sense that the wait list really gets different information than my regular newsletter, much more geared towards what we learn in Growth Evelyn, much more nurturing towards the program. And that way also I can relieve some of the promotional pressure from um, my existing email list. So I have an existing email list. And this year I really burned them out because we had playing, been playing the school games, right? Then um, we had our regular launches, relaunches of successful programs that we did. Eventually I needed to 
you know, close some of them down for enrollments. I'm still having them and, and optimizing and serving them, um, but, you know, closing them down for uh, enrollment to streamline focus. So that was a lot of promotion going on. And then when it comes to growing Grow with Evelyn, after I, you know, removed all of the kings and made sure return is low and members are happy, I started focusing on growth again. And with an always open membership, you have to kind of always promote something because otherwise, you know, if, if you're also having the ads, you see, you see what happens just with the ads, right? One way to combat this is to have a well-nurtured audience that you can run promotions towards. But there's only so many promotions you can run so many times because before you completely fatigue that warm audience that you've built and just you withdraw too much from the reciprocity bucket, right? So I did price increase promotions. I did limited time bonuses. I did now we're having this uh, workshop inside. So join us now. And eventually I could see the diminishing returns of that and I could really see my... Uh, regular list burning out. So I want to prevent that. That list has offered me many, many, many successful launches, has been the backbone of profitability and security in my business. I don't want to, you know, create resentment within people because I constantly promote something. So those are completely split up. I created a, a brand new Miller Lite account and connected with a new set. And so there will be two different paths of nurturing for me. And waitlist will be more intense because people also signed up for that. Now the waitlist integration on Sapir looks really, really simple. It's just two uh, places to connect. So when somebody answers a question, you create or update a subscriber in MailerLite and basically add them to a group. So in MailerLite, you can um, create a group, like very simple, I'll show you in a second. And then you would want to set up a delivery automation. So this is when subscriber joins the group grow, uh, waitlist Grow with Evelyn, then they receive an email with the goodies, right, with the patients back. So I didn't want to only make a waitlist. I wanted to make it a premium waitlist, like really give people a reason to join. Also because, you know, that helps with the cost per registration for the waitlist. And here I took a number that I think would be obnoxiously high, right? It would be $7 cost per registration. If I'm doing a good job, I'm getting a, a member a waitlist sign up for a lot cheaper, right? And so this is me trying to do a good job. Here you can see I run this ad right now. So doors are closed, but you can join my waitlist and get a patient's party pack, premium waitlist with updates, training resources, plus instant access to my micro offer creator toolkit, templates and resources for ads, memberships, and school, secure spot and get the goodies, right? So bundling the waiting list with also resources, and then um, the copy for the ad, let me just get you that, is also playing with, with this idea of this is not your regular wait list. So here you can see, this is not your average wait list. After doing this, I decided to close down. Wait lists are often just this random sign up, right? Where you get a confirmation and then nothing happens until you, you should buy. Um, so I have a different vision with a patient's party bag and resources. So if you want frequent updates uh, and secure your spot in line, then sign up for free now. That's kind of the, the um, copy and angle that I take for the ads right now. And so when people see this, they click, they request access in school, they give the email, they get it to Sapir, and the, it creates and updates a subscriber in MailerLite. They get this welcome email and then regular emails that I create. Now let me just quickly get back to show you where you can create and the group and the automation. So I also decided that I want to use MailerLite because I recommend it to members because you can get started for free. And so this way I can also record more and better tutorials around it for you guys. So here under subscribers is where you create the group. Here under automations is where you set up the delivery automation. And I'll record a little bit more detailed training about the account setup and how to get your domain verified and things like that. So um, that's the that's the thing that I'm doing with the waitlist. And right now, figuring out the waitlist ads, really obsessing over getting good cost per sign up and nurturing the waitlist um, strategically. Eventually, I'm going to do a flash opening to that list specifically um, to fill up to the members cap. And then what's really important is in school, when you have those requests coming in, now you need to remove the, them before you push. So when people have requested access here to your community, before I will eventually do that flash opening, I need to remove all of them because they can't request to join again. So then they can't purchase. So on the day where I'm going to do the 
the flash opening for the list. First off, I'm going to nurture people on the wait list towards so they know when it will happen, right? And they need to be ready. And it's only on that day to jump in. And also making sure that I'm removing all ads and all other traffic sources as much as possible on that day. Um, and then I need to remove people from here from the waiting list on that day. And then moving forward after, you know, topping up, filling up, hopefully. Then when a chunk of people has churned, I can see based on when somebody joined, who is the next in line. And then those people will be removed here from here. And then they get the secret date as in when they can sign up. So um, that's a complete big picture. And now, if you have any questions about this, you can drop it in the chat. And in the meantime, um, while those get come in or not, I'm going to answer your pre-submitted questions for the Q&A. All right. Jonas, you were first, and I'm answering your question around the 18-minute mark. Just quickly need to get my YouTube link, and then we get going.